the hub nerds and nerdettes and we little nerdlings all. Two Buddy Big John and Team Two Gun Pixel presents Legendary Gaming. <laughs> so we just played a, my, my third, fourth, fourth game now of this. Um, Anthony is second. Number two. Number two, Anthony. Number two. We got the right man are you now for their first, their yep. first game. Right. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, Ryan and Alex are going to talk about the game in general, their experience of it, what they think of it, all the good stuff. The good and then we're going to hand it over to Anthony to close out and talk about the expansions. Correct. Uh, since me and Anthony, uh, did not, actually, no one did. We just, the first time we broke open... The expansions. Let's take a look at them. This is the uh, two expansion sets that came with the Kickstarter. The Kickstarter, yeah. All right, so that added some new characters to play. That added a new angle with the bandits. So you'll be talking about that, Anthony. Yeah. Well, let's start off with your first impressions now, guys, of playing this for the first time. There's been some hype about this game. So my very first thing, before you get into anything else, do you think your first game in? Western Legends lived up to the hype. A thousand percent, yes. I do, and I didn't think it would. No, oh, you were a little pessimistic going in. I, I was, I was. <laughs> I didn't have any expectations one way or the other. Uh, you know, seeing the hype about it, I'm like, all right, people are raving about it, but we'll see what it's like. You know, I didn't have, I didn't expect it to live up. I didn't expect it to uh, not live up. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, after playing it, I'm like, wow, yeah, this is. Uh, just as good as as it as it could. I mean, it's a really, it's a really really good fun game. Um, you know, sandbox games are always. Uh, I, I enjoy sandbox games for the most part, kind of across the board. Um, and this one with the theming of it, it was great. Uh, with the gameplay of it, it was way more simple than I thought it was going to be. Sometimes sandbox games get a little complex with like conditional rules and, and extra components. Um, but there was just enough uh, uh, with you know what was going on between moving around the board and, and, and you know mining the gold and, and dealing with the cattle uh, uh, that was a lot of fun um, I thought the the poker aspect added a cool little uh, function to the side where it wasn't we were talking a little bit about it beforehand um, you're saying that it adds to the game without being too overbearing and I thought that was a perfect description of it it really did add just that extra little kind of fun thing instead of just being like oh I go, I'm going to go I'll gamble right. and like a roll of a die it's like oh one two three I win four five six I lose like it actually it actually mattered what you played yeah um, so that was a fun little thing on the side um, I thought all the like the characters were you know great uh, I don't know that much about Western Legend but there was even with a little bit of that I do know there was a lot more characters that I'm like oh yeah I kind of are sort of familiar with what's going on so they did a good job of pulling characters that are you know very the, familiar with like you know the big ones Billy the Kid Doc Holliday, yeah exactly you know a Clampy Jane you know sure. stuff like that but but yeah it, 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 it drawn on a lot of really really cool components uh, again gameplay was pretty straightforward um, I I loved the to, you know compared to dark side light side track I guess to a point um, to the Marshall track and the water track and uh, these cards, the uh, the action cards, that's you know the event cards, I guess would be a better description of those. One, like as we progress through the game and achieve certain goals. I think they're the story cards. The story cards, yeah. The, yeah. Interesting how, and it's not the same thing every time. So like, you know, if you end your turn at a location uh, outside of town, you start it, and depending on how many people are playing, uh, increases the how many times it has to be triggered before you flip it over and do the event. Right. That I I can't remember any other game that's done something like that. And that really stuck out to me as, as a really cool, cool function that I wish would show up more uh, in games. Like, there's certain games that, that wouldn't work with. Absolutely. But sandbox games, it works really, really, really well. Yes. Uh, and for this point in particular, they were themed well, and all of the, uh, the outcomes worked great for the game. I had, <laughs> I had a lot of fun with this. Yeah, I, I loved, I also love these, these side quests. Each character has their own unique set of four side quests. It seems like every character has... One side quest in general, we figured this out after yeah. we looked afterwards. Um, both John and Anthony had the same side quest, which is get to six or higher on either of the tracks, and you, you accomplish one of them. Uh, for both of us, that was the one that we did. Yeah, I, yeah, I did not get that one. Um, so, um, it's, it's cool that each character has unique, has three unique quests. 
Um, and they, they add, it's, it's nice to have those three unique quests because it gives you something else to focus on. Right. Like, you, you want to do this because each quest that you complete gets you one to three additional um, victory points at the end of the game, right. which are legendary points in this. Right. Um, so that was, that was great. And the first time you get one, the second time you get two to add to your, your starting one, and then you put the lowest one back in, and you shuffle up what's left. And then when you get the third one, you get three, so you have five to choose from, and so you can put the lowest two back. So that's that's a really cool way to to reward you with more points, and you get increasing rewards because you get to increase your previous rewards as well. Right. If you're drawing better um, chips. Yeah, there's a lot of incentive to kind of go after that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's cool because you know different characters have different things like. Mm-hmm. Some characters are more focused on one specific town or another another specific town or doing things outside of town, more combat related, more gambling related, going you know to the sheriff's yep. office. So they're all all different, um, which is which is nice because it incentivizes those characters to play the game just slightly differently than each other. And it also kind of puts you in an interesting situation. So like I, I played Billy the Kid for this one, you know, Legendary Outlaw, Billy the Kid. Um, so one of my goals was to win a game of poker specifically in the town of uh, Dark Rock. Right. The problem is, the sheriff is also stationed right. in Dark Rock. So once you're on that wanted track, the sheriff starts trying to come after you. Yeah. So I have to try to win here, but the sheriff is also there, so I have to try to time my you know, arrival in town as Billy the Kid, or if you're playing Billy the Kid, you have to time your arrival in town. With whether the sheriff is there, active or not, so it's like, oh, what am I supposed to try to do here right. to try to get around the sheriff? So there's fun aspects like that, where there is, like, you're not, not only are you playing against each other, right. you are also playing against the game. Yeah, and, and I enjoyed the fact that we all took a little bit different strategies. Yeah. I was very poker-heavy in the game, and so the way poker works <laughs> is you have your ca- car- your hand of cards, which are poker cards. They all also have special abilities on them. So on the bottom it says either it's a bonus action, a reaction, or an action. So if it's an action, you have to actually spend one of your three actions every turn on it. If it's a reaction, you get to use it for free in reaction to whatever it says. And if it's a bonus, you get the bonus when it says, um, such as playing a poker game. If you're using this card to play a poker game, um, one of the tens gives you either $30 extra or an extra poker card. You lose, you get both. Yeah. Um, so so it's it's cool that the, the, the cards kind of serve multiple functions because you use them both for playing poker and for every combat. So highest card wins in combat and then the best poker hand wins. And you're playing a uh, variant on um, Texas Hold'em. So when you're playing poker um, in the saloon, you choose two cards from your hand. If you're playing against the house, no other no other players involved. The another player gets four cards, chooses the best two out of it, and then three cards come up on the table, and you use those three cards to make the best hand, um, which is cool. If other players join in, which unfortunately we, we didn't have right. a chance to do, there's only one that time where two people we were in done. the saloon at the same time, and yeah. it just didn't work out. Yeah, then then you end up playing against each other. Yeah, which would have been cool. Yeah. Um, Next I mean, <laughs> this would and and this would be an easy game to, you know, you could house rule it to vary to create a variant where you actually played a full game of Texas Hold'em, yeah, you really, a full you, hand. You easily could. You easily could. You yeah. easily could. Yeah. Do a turn, do a river. Yeah. I mean, there's 52 cards. You got the full you deck. You got the full deck. Yeah. 54 with the the two jokers that are at right. the expansion. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, that's super cool. Um, it's really well integrated into the game. Agreed. So as I as I said, that's I did that heavily, and I lost most of the time. <laughs> um, like I started off well, I'm like, oh, I won the first two games of poker. This is the best. I should do this right from the game. And then I like won like one or two other hands through the rest of the game, um, and probably played a total of like ten games. So I won like four oh, out easily, of ten. Easily. Like it was it was mm, I I lost so much, um, but it was great. I had the ten gallon hat, which is an item. Which rewarded me for that, because when I lost, you have to anti-10 to play poker. When you lose with the 10-gallon hat, you get your 10 bucks back. (laughs) If you win, you get an extra victory point. So, all it costs you to play poker is one poker card, because if you lose, you get get a poker card back. 
And by playing, you play a poker card, so you don't actually pay anything if you lose. It's basically free. Um, if you win, you get those ten. Uh, you get sixty bucks right. if you're playing against the house. Right. If you're playing against another player, well, I guess you'd get, you get an extra, seventy bucks. Yeah, you get an extra ten bucks, um, right? depending on the number of people in. Right. Um, so, so it was, it was it was really fun that to do a different strategy because I was I was the poker heavy person. Everyone else did more of a mix of cattle rustling. And going after those bandits and just getting Dueling. in duels. Yeah, it's true. Um, it's true. It was fun because Anthony and I both, poor Ryan. <sighs> only so, wanted yeah, to be. being the only outlaw in the game, like I start being Billy the Kid, of course, uh, I started out on the wanted track. Um, so I was outlaw from the very start, and it was. It was I, out of four of us, two of us were on the martial track, so it's like, oh yeah, go after the outlaw. Sure, why not? Right, right. So it was. Anthony and Alex playing the marshals that were coming after me. I had the sheriff on me as well. It was just, it was, you know, one out of three turn. I, I really, it was, you know, <laughs> three different opportunities to, to get sent back to prison, which happened what three times? Yeah, it happened a lot. Uh, so that kind of set my game back a bit. <laughs> so it's 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 interesting. Um, if you have a martial heavy game, I think the marshals have an advantage. Definitely. Um, from from our experience here, this is one game. Right. Maybe maybe crazy here, but there's somebody hunting down the wanted player in addition to the marshals hunting them down. Marshal points are kind of harder to get because you can only get them from sending cattle to the railroad or, well, I guess hunting down bandits or hunting down, hunting down ban outlaws, yeah. which there was always a ton of bandits because we were flipping these story cards so much. Well, also, I mean, the thing is with the bandits, you had this other side deck that you had to interact with because of the underside of the bandit tokens. Um, here's one. It's yeah. uh, so like this bandit was a four, uh, so when you cross his path, you would draw one of those cards and do the corresponding four, the fourth line on the card when you draw that card. Um, and there was a chance to get martial points from those, but it's right. kind of it's a one in six opportunity. So it's like you're guaranteed to get it with the cattle. I think you're guaranteed to get it from the. Arrest you're guaranteed thing. to get it with the arrest if there's wanted players. Right. So. One, the bandits, you get to choose either a martial point or a uh, sure. legendary point. Yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, granted, you know, bandits are good to hunt for everybody. Outlaws get a legendary point. Um, marshals can either get legendary points or martial points. points. Yes. Um, if you have the Peacekeeper, you get an extra... You can, uh, maybe I didn't not. have it. I didn't have it. No, oh, the, the Peacekeeper is only for players or wrangling. So oh, okay. it doesn't work for bandits, but it works for cattle and, and yep. arresting players. Um so martial points, they say they're harder to get. I don't know that that's really true, to be honest. I found yeah. that it was harder to get the wanted points because... You keep getting knocked down. Because what happens when you get arrested, if a player arrests you or the sheriff arrests you, you lose all those points. Yeah. So I could have easily... like We were doing the math before. If I didn't get caught, I would have easily been on the nine. Right. Because I robbed the bank t successfully twice. Yes. Yeah. Three. Yeah. <laughs> and I started with two. So I would have been on the eight, right? You know, for just with all that factored in, I ended up getting picking up one or two here or there yeah. through other parts of the game. So that could have been a ton of points, but yeah, because I kept losing them all. Uh, so again, that's another incentive to kind of do a different strategy with the po so instead of gambling all the time with the poker cards, you want to hold on to the poker cards because that's how you interact in combat is the values of the poker cards. Yeah. So right. that would have been more like instead of gambling a lot, I would have been like, oh, let me hold on to these so I can try to have the higher cards to fight against. The Shatterer for fighting against the Marshals who are coming. All right, before we move on to Anthony, any final thoughts from each of you real quick? Uh, final thought, this game was a ton of fun. Really enjoyed the sandbox the sandbox aspect. The theming was great, even with like the flavor text on the cards. And uh, just the items that you could get, it really, really worked out well. One extra little thing I want to point out is um, I'm a sucker for like extra little props. So that little general store setup over there where all the items are stored. Yeah. I, I got so happy seeing that and so excited because I'm like, oh my god, there's an actual little thing for the store. It's not just draw from the deck of cards. It's like, it looks like an actual shop setup. Well, and it's uh, cool because it saves space on the table, too. It does. Yeah. It does. So that was, uh, that was a, that's a lot of fun. I, I, I got a kick out of seeing that, that it's this compact, convenient little setup. Cool. So that was fun. Uh, Alex? Great game, well themed. Um, all the components are greatly themed. We talked about the general store. The money is is themed. The poker cards are themed. Everything's themed well. Um, there's great player aids. Oh, it's nice. unfortunate that these player aids are on flimsy paper. Um, so through a lot of use, I can definitely see these getting worn out. Um, so it's too bad that they aren't on um, cardstock or or paperboard. But 
I'm, I will take paper good player aids over no player aids or not enough player aids for each player because oh, this, this includes six player aids, so yes. enough for as many players as there are in the game. So I'll, I'll take this over insufficient player aids or none at all. Um, Arguably, this is a top three player aid I've ever seen because of just how much detail it has. Because we rarely had to refer to the rules for anything expanded. Like, he was like, oh, what does this do? This does that. Okay, moving on. The one thing that's not on here is fights with other players. Yeah. Which is unfortunate because we did do that a few times. Yeah, thanks, um, guys. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, overall, a really well designed and produced game. The iconography is great. Um, everything is, is very clean and clear. Replayability? So, I think this game is one that you can play a lot. We'll see um, in terms of strategies. I think one, there, there might be strategies that end up floating to the top, um, especially for certain phases of the game. Mm -hmm. But I think this is a game that we could definitely get to the table many times and be happy with. Absolutely. All right, so that's uh, the thoughts on the base game. Now, Anthony, yes. we incorporated the two expansions. You, you've already had a chance to play the game, but we played it without the expansions. Now that we've added this in, I'd like your thoughts on them. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for expansions, especially if it adds um, something to the game and doesn't detract from it or it doesn't seem um, hokey. Uh, surprisingly enough, we, these were the new cards that were added, and you can see some of the names. Some of them are very, very familiar. Some may not uh, depending on how well you know the West. Uh, shockingly, none of these were actually used. <laughs> we still use the basic uh, deck of players, so... Except I got Judge. Yeah, except, got except for Judge, Judge Roy Bean. Bean. Yeah. Uh, so that there tells you how much replayability this game is actually going to have if we haven't even really scratched the surface of this expansion deck. Uh, on top of that, they're going to add in some new legendary items. Yeah which was something I like uh, playing a sandbox type of game anyway. Mm -hmm. um, you're giving me something extra to shoot for and uh, maybe get a good little treat in the meantime. Uh, myself and Alex we were both lucky enough to actually draw from that uh, twice. Um, yeah. You got the black coat and something else. Lightning. Lightning. That's the horse. Uh, and I got, uh, let's see, I got the lasso, and I got something Thunder. Like, the and Thunder, the revolver, right. So, they're nice little upgrades to the common cards that you get with the game. Um, they fit in perfectly. I didn't think they detracted from the game. I actually thought they added, because now, as you can see, I was loaded with three guns. So now, <laughs> coming up against different players, or... Uh, the bandits, now I get to choose which one am I going to holster that's actually going to benefit me more for this particular turn. Um, and, I, and I love that a lot. Uh, speaking on what Brian was saying, th this thing, I love. Yeah. yeah. So, when you have some of the legendary items, it makes it a little bit easier maybe to actually complete some of the little side quests. And, and this is how you get the side quests. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the legendary the items. The legendary too. items, right. So that, that feeds right into it. I loved it. I, I thought the expansion was great. I mean, we were even talking about after the game, there is so much more they can open this game up with. Yeah. So if you yeah. add on expansions, you're not going to feel like, oh, what a waste of X amount of dollars for this. this yeah. You can know this is just going to be like, oh man, I really want to try that new character. Oh man, I can't wait to see what the legendary items like. I was tickled pink when I, I, I sort of cheated the last time we played this game. I saw they had dynamite. I'm like, okay. They got dynamite. Well, not only did they add the dynamite, but as you can see from the previous pictures before, they added a ton more I never would have thought of. The the lasso was one. I yeah. thought the black duster coat that feeds right into the old west. I love that. So yeah. the uh, this is a great job on the two expansion packs, and I can tell you there's probably room for at least another one, maybe another two expansion packs that you can come out with. Well, these expansions were great too because they didn't add any complexity to the No, game. it was seamless. It was, you know, it's add some more custom story cards and add some legendary items and then special characters and it's, you know, something to add as a two-player variant. Right. No, oh, you like items in a store? How about we give you legendary items? Yeah. You like that? Sure. Everybody loves upgrades. So you're you're happy with the replay, yeah. uh, T-Bone? Yeah. And 
And you guys are happy with the initial play? I, I'm definitely played this again. Yeah. You're looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, excellent, excellent. All right, so uh, I think that about covers it for right now. I think everybody here is happy. Loving it. I'm happy. happy. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm Big John G. These are the 20 Sided Warriors. Woo. Thank you all for checking out Two Gun Pixie on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Thank you so much for subscribing to Two Gun Pixie on YouTube, for liking us, for commenting, and of course, for sharing our videos. So we are.